Okay, guys, so uh, today uh, Giovanni is going to continue his uh, presentation. And uh, I would like just to remember that uh, next week, Matthias Fey will join us and uh, he is going to uh, talk about the project, uh, new developments. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, share this the link of the meeting so that we will be I mean, so many, many guys and, and so on. And I think it's, that's, that's all. Gabriele, do you want to add something? No, no, I think it's, it's perfect. Should we mention also the, um, the lecture at the end of, yeah, so just briefly, we are planning also to have a final, final session by the, by the end of June, where we'd like to have like the session open for people that want to briefly uh, present uh, what kind of problem they are working on if for, for someone. So if someone wants to to briefly give an, an introduction to its uh, research topic on or how graph neural network are used in the, in the work of everyone. So we will uh, we'll send an email or a message in the chat and then people that want to, to present something like really a brief introduction, five minutes if you want. Uh, we'll have a session like that, like just to conclude the year. But we will give more details in the, the following days, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea is to, uh, I don't know, see, uh, since we came from different backgrounds and everyone is working on some specific topic, the idea is to, not to bring solution, but to bring uh, problems, like uh, where I would like to apply graph neural networks in my field. And we are really happy if everyone can say a few words to, to have an idea or, uh, for instance, uh, for me, it seems complex to, to see graph neural networks in chemistry, but for some of you, it's obviously. obviously. And so see this uh, potential application is definitely uh, useful for everyone. Okay, so I think Gabri uh, sorry, Giovanni can start. So when you want. Yes. Okay. So uh, my screen. Hey, can you can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so I can start, I guess. So welcome everybody. Um, today's tutorial is going to be uh, the follow up of the one that I did uh, last week, which was uh, the first part on how we uh, handle data basically uh, in Python geometric, how we manipulate it. Um, and today, um, so the, la the last time, we focus a little bit more on uh, the kind of data structures that uh, and the classes that we can um, use basically uh, to store, manipulate, uh, load, whatever uh, graphs basically. Okay. So uh, we have seen that uh, there are several uh, classes that we can use. So for instance, data is the most basic um, data object in which we store a graph uh, into a data object. Then we have data set, which is a collection uh, of graphs a cluster data, cluster loader, in order to uh, um, assign uh, nodes of a graph into clusters and then how to how to retrieve these clusters, batches, so again, uh, other collections uh, of graphs, how we sample neighbor uh, neighbors uh, in the graph neighborhood, and how we uh, load the data into batches in order to uh, perform a mini batch computation uh, in our uh, graph neural network models, OK? We also have seen uh, a little bit um, the torch geometric uh, datasets uh, submodule in which we have seen that there are several datasets that are already constructed for us um, in a way that basically uh, these datasets, uh, I mean, these classes take, um, uh, basically they, uh, they download and convert the dataset in a PyTorch geometric format automatically, okay? So today um, we're gonna focus a little bit more on uh, the data set uh, themselves. So basically how we can construct our own data set and uh, uh, what are basically the 
the, the most relevant data sets and the, most importantly, the most relevant benchmarks out there um, to uh, compare our graph models with uh, state-of-the-art models uh, and uh, um, with other uh, graph neural network techniques. So um, this is uh, the outline of today's tutorial. So we are going to have um, a lot of J Jupyter Notebook uh, session. And then uh, I'm going to explain um, the two main uh, graph benchmarks uh, framework that are out there. So let's start with um, how we can create our own data set in PyTorch Geometric. So basically, um, last time uh, I briefly introduced the fact that we, um, we have the data set class and we have two other subclasses, which are, um, sorry, uh, we have the data set class and we have a subclass, which is in-memory data set, which is used for uh, basically um, data sets which fit entirely into your computer memory, okay, in your computer RAM. So for today's uh, example, uh, I have um, I have uh, looked around in the internet for some data sets that uh, were not implemented in PyTorch Geometric, and I have selected this uh, um, data set which is called Frankenstein, uh, which is uh, actually it's a uh, it's quite um, um, a collage of things. So basically, uh, the data set, the original data set uh, in Frankenstein is a molecule data set, okay, uh, but in say in the molecule. Uh, where each node is basically uh, an atom, okay? Uh, in these uh, molecules, the atoms have, has been have been replaced with MNIST images. So imagine uh, a molecule in which the nodes are MNIST images, okay? So this is the Frankenstein data set in, uh, in a nutshell. Uh, where did I find it? Well, there is this site which I uh, really suggest you, uh, which is Network Repository. Uh, so basically, if you uh, are looking for some uh, data sets uh, about graphs, here you find plenty of them. So here you can see that, uh, I mean, the, the, the site is very well constructed. So here you have all the categories uh, of data sets, for instance, uh, depending on which uh, domain you want to explore. So here I simply went to labeled, uh, labeled the networks. And uh, here you can see that you have plenty of uh, data sets. You have also information of the data set. Here I have found my uh, Frankenstein. So here you can see it, okay. Uh, also it's nice because uh, here in this site you have also a visualization tool that allows you to, um, to see some statistics of the graph uh, like in an interactive way. So I'll not go into detail into network repository, but here it is where I found uh, this uh, data set. So let's uh, already go to the notebook to start our uh, practical section, session. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so as I told you, um, here uh, we have the, we're gonna use the Frankenstein data set. Uh, initially it was presented uh, in this paper, which is graph invariant kernels. Uh, I link it here. Uh, again, the, the data set is a collection of um, um, molecules in which we have substituted the atoms symbol uh, with MNIST images. Uh, the, the task here is basically it's a data set constructed for a binary uh, prediction task in which we have to predict if there has been a mutagenicity in the, of the molecule or not, basically. Um, so uh, I will uh, go into the actual files containing the data in a second. Let me just um, have a look at the readme, basically, that, that you can find uh, in the in the zip file that you download from a network repository. So basically here, Frankenstein uh, contains uh, the following files. So basically we have um, a file which contains the node attributes, which are basically the node features. Uh, we have a file with the edges. Okay, so basically uh, it is uh, the usual representation in which you have uh, two columns, one for the source and one for the target, basically of the edge. So. Uh, the direction, uh, having the direction of the edge and the values inside the row and the columns are the actual node IDs, okay? Then we have um, the graph labels, which basically is uh, for, uh, for each line, we have the label of the graph indexed by I, which is the, the number of the line, basically. And then we have uh, the graph IDX, which is basically one of the most important files because here we find 
um, basically um, this um, this file represent it gives us the information about which node uh, belongs to which graph. Okay, so basically here uh, we have the column of the graph identifiers for all node of all the graphs. So the value in the ith line is the graph ID of the node with node ID i. Okay. Um, we will see uh, in a minute uh, better these things. So I have already uh, collected some statistics about this data set. So in this data set, we have a total of 4,337 uh, graphs. Each, gra each graph is one molecule, basically. Um, we have uh, 73 and more, uh, 73,000 and more uh, nodes. And each node basically has a node feature associated with it of 780 uh, elements, okay? Uh, this is a little bit weird because as I told you again, um, this uh, node feature information is basically MNIST images. Uh, MNIST images are usually 28 by 28, so the total should be 784, not 80. Uh, but we will change it uh, later without a uh, loss of information. And then we have uh, the total number of edges. So it's a, I would say roughly small data set, uh, but there is um, a lot of uh, interesting information in here. So before uh, actually telling you how we can uh, basically construct our uh, Frankenstein class uh, in Python geometric, I will go a little bit in more in detail on the uh, basically the data processing that we have to do in order to um, extract the information about the graphs and store them into a data object in PyTorch Geometry, okay? Because that is basically what we are gonna do. We are gonna uh, go through um, these files and extract the information for each graph and then store each graph into uh, the data object, okay? So I have already downloaded the, uh, the files. Here I have it in uh, data, uh, no, sorry, in... Uh, TMP row, here are the list basically of the files that you uh, extract from the zip that you download, which are basically this one. And uh, I have chosen to um, load the information on the, in these files, which, which are basically um, CSV files. I have decided to load them uh, as pandas data frame. So pandas is a library that allows you to um, um, efficiently um, store and manipulate um, uh, data structures, so usually tabular data, data structures. Uh, so I, since the files are CSV, I have decided to use pandas. So here we're gonna have basically a, a pandas data frame for each information that we need. So the, the node eight attributes, uh, the, the list of the edges, the, uh, basically um, the IDs of the nodes uh, belonging to which graph, and the graph labels, okay? So let's uh, load this information into our uh, uh, data frames. So here we have that uh, the, um, the IDs of the graphs goes from one to 4,030, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> 4,337. So uh, the process that, that I'm gonna show you now is to extract the informations about one graph, so I, I have um, I pick just one random ID, which is in this case, th two, three, four, five, okay? So we're gonna load the information about the graph indexed as uh, at the line, basically, uh, two, three, four, five. So here I have chosen my graph ID. Uh, so basically, uh, what do we do here? So let me show you um, these steps. So basically here, what do we extract? We extract from, um, the pandas data frame uh, containing basically the um, the graph IDs and the node IDs. We extract uh, only the rows in which basically um, a node is associated to that graph. Basically, okay. So here in this file, we have the the the, the row identifier is basically the ID of the node, and the actual value in the file is um, uh, a scalar indicating to which uh, graph it belongs, okay? So here we extract uh, the set of node IDs belonging to the graph 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? Uh, and basically, after we have done so, 
we have the indexes of the ideas uh, of the nodes that we are interested in and uh, having this we can extract their attributes from uh, the corresponding uh, data frame which is node attributes okay um okay very good now that we have also the node ideas we can extract uh, basically the connectivity of the graph by looking into the pandas data frame uh, containing the uh, edge indexes uh, which are basically um, the um, which are basically the, the the lines in which I find uh, in the first column the IDs of the nodes that I'm interest, interested in. Okay, uh, and then by just having the the graph ID here, I can look at the pandas data frame containing the graph labels and extract the um, the corresponding label for the graph, which is going to be either one or minus one, depending on if this multigenicity has happened or not, okay? Okay, so here I have extracted all the information that I need. So let's print some uh, shapes of these uh, uh, resulting data frames. So basically here we have that for the graph uh, with this index, I have 18 nodes, uh, okay? The attributes we know that they're gonna be uh, 18 by uh, 780. We have a total of 38 edges. And okay, we have the, the, the single label uh, for the graph, okay? So these are the, the structures. Let's actually uh, look at the values inside. So here, as I told you, in node IDs, I have the IDs of the nodes that we are interested in, okay? Here, uh, having these uh, node, node IDs, we have extracted the information uh, of the node attributes uh, belonging to that ID, okay? Then here again, so having this uh, list of nodes, okay, we have extracted, basically we have looked at the, this first column, which is a source, okay? And we have extracted all the um, the edges, all the rows basically having uh, an ID, which is in the node list, okay? And then here uh, as final, we have the graph label, which in this case is uh, one, okay? These are all the informations that we need, but we uh, basically these are all the informations that we need in order to create a PyTorch geometric data object, okay? But there are still some steps that we need uh, to, um, to do before doing so. Because uh, here, as you can see, for instance, the IDs of the, um, sorry, the values here for the edges Yes, they are correct because they uh, they are basically done for um, the ideas of the nodes that we have extracted, but we want them to be, let's say, uh, normalized. So basically, in this case, uh, we don't want um, the, um, the information to look like this. We want basically uh, this node ID to become zero, this node ID to become one, and so on and so forth, uh, in order to basically have um, all the information uh, standardized for uh, a single graph, okay? So um, in order to do so, uh, here it is the procedure. I will not go uh, too much into detail to it, but basically what we do is we create a map of each uh, node ID that you have extracted and we assign it uh, the numbers from zero to uh, the number of nodes minus one. And basically this allows us to convert um, the um the the edge connectivity information from this to something like this okay so basically these two tensors uh, this tensor of two dimensions here is basically the uh representing the edge the same that you has that, that you have seen above just this is uh normalized okay in this way that i've told you also if you remember last time i said that um when we uh give an input to uh, the data object, um, the connectivity, we need a vector which is two by the number of um, total uh, edges, okay? So here uh, I have converted it uh, into this format already. Okay, um, another thing. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, all the uh, information that you have seen here uh, are uh, still uh, stored as pandas data frame, uh, but we actually want 
uh, we want to um, convert them into NumPy, uh, sorry, PyTorch objects, and then give it an input to the, our uh, data um, object uh, in the end. So here we are going to do the conversion to uh, NumPy arrays first and then to tensors. Also, uh, as I told you before, uh, we have this uh, node feature information, which is a vector of 780 uh, dimensions. But uh, it, since they are representing MNIST images, I would like them to be uh, 784. So what to do? What do we do? We basically take um, the data frame of the. Um, so basically, we take the the node attributes matrix, okay, and we uh, pad four zeros at the end, okay? So we, from a vector from uh, 780, now we're gonna have a vector of 784, which can, which we will uh, plot later into the actual images to see if we did it correctly, okay? So here it is. So here uh, we basically uh, have padded this um, uh, column of four zeros at the end of each node attribute, okay? Here, uh, we have converted um, the edge information um, into a, a PyTorch, um, uh, sorry, into a long uh, object because uh, it doesn't take, th these are indexes basically. So we want to use long and not int uh, as, um, um, as format, as data format. Uh, the same we do basically for the label, okay? Uh, the label here also, I do another small trick, which is basically uh, since the labels are now one or minus one, I maybe like it. Uh, I would prefer it to have it in a zero one uh, classes distribution. So basically here I change it. And if it's one, I keep one. If it's uh, minus one, I uh, convert it to zero, okay? So this is all we need. So here we see now that uh, our matrix of node features is uh, 18 by 784, as uh, we were expecting. OK, now we have all the ingredients. And simply, we have to put it into a um, data object in order to create uh, our graph in Python Geometric. Uh, so here it is. Uh, this graph here is uh, what we have seen also the last time. Let's plot it. OK, so here we have our molecule. Uh, these uh, are the connectivities. Everything seems fine. Uh, also, I told you, uh, I mean, uh, this data set have nodes which are MNIST images. So we can also plot the MNIST images associated with, um, with the nodes, basically. So doing the reshape to an image and plot it uh, with plt.matshow, we can see that, uh, for instance, uh, the, the sixth um, node here is actually a zero. Whereas, for instance, if we plot the, the first node, it's a one. Uh, maybe some other node is going to be some other one <laughs> in this case. Uh, maybe others are other numbers. I don't know now. But uh, we can we have actually checked that uh, the information is correct. So we are actually dealing with MNIST images. OK, so this is basically uh, the the steps in order to extract the information for one graph. What we want to do uh, in our uh, data set object later is to do it for all the graphs, of course. Uh, so we are going to have a for loop uh, iterating over the graph IDs. Uh, as I've, uh, I've selected one earlier, we will iterate over graph IDs and extract all the information that we need. OK, um, okay so it's now time to uh, put everything together in order to construct our dataset class in Python Geometric. So uh, as I told you uh, earlier, we are going to uh, basically use uh, this in-memory dataset uh, class, which allows us to store uh, the entire data set into our uh, RAM um, of our computer. In order to do so, we need to basically implement these um, four methods here, OK? Uh, they will become clearer in a moment as I go through uh, the actual implementation of the class, OK? So basically, here we have our custom class, which we call Frankenstein, which extends in-memory data set. Uh, what are the ingredients that we need to put inside um, uh, a data set? 
uh, object. So basically here we need to specify the URL from which to download the files if we want to actually um, download them from the internet, okay? So here we specify the URL and uh, what, uh, what is gonna happen basically uh, is that once uh, we uh, initialize this um, an object with this class, this function will be called. So basically uh, the data set will be downloaded from this URL here into a specified path. Uh, we, since we're gonna extract, uh, I mean, we're gonna download a zip file, we can also extract it. Also, in order not to um, have, um, let's say, um, too much memory consumption, we also can uh, delete, for instance, the zip file that we have just downloaded, okay? Uh, the other components that we need to specify uh, is the list of the raw files. So basically the files that I showed you uh, earlier, these files here, okay? We specify uh, which files we are interested in. So for instance, I am not interested in having the readme inside of the uh, this class. So basically don't put it here. Here we have the, the, the list basically. Then um, we have processed file names. So basically once we have done all the process, the data is gonna be stored into a, a single file, which is gonna be uh, this file, data.pt, okay? We need to specify it uh, by hand, um, uh, but here we can assign basically whatever names we want, okay? I, can, I could also put uh, frankenstein.pt if I want. Okay, the most important um, method of this class is basically the process method, which is which does basically everything we have seen already uh, in the previous um, blocks of codes. Just as I told you before, we iterate over all the IDs uh, of the graphs, okay? So here I extract the list uh, of the IDs of the graphs. And then uh, for each ID, I extract all the information that we have seen above. So basically these are the exact same steps that we have seen so far. Uh, the only, um, adaptation that we need to do here is basically uh, we need to uh, to store each graph that we load into a list. Uh, in this case, I called it a data list. Why is it so? Because basically uh, later we can use this data list to apply our filter or transformation. So if you remember last time, I said that um, there are uh, some steps that are done before basically um, storing the data set, uh, basically once you download it for the first time and other operations that are done as um, every time you um, basically retrieve the, um, the data set from the file system, okay? So basically here, if you have, uh, if you want basically to apply these functions, which are the filters or the transformations, um, you need to uh, basically convert each data object by applying these functions. So basically, this is the way to do it. It's very easy. Uh, no need to, to go to explain further here. Uh, the last two steps uh, that we need is to basically uh, group all together uh, the graphs into the data list. And we can do it by using this self.collate, which is an inbuilt uh, function. Uh, and then, we store this uh, process um, data set into, um, into um, our local file system. Um, I will now show you how it works. Ah, okay, so one last thing that I have done, uh, which is a little bit fancy, but it's nice, I think. So here, for instance, uh, I have put a loading bar. So basically, each time we are processing a graph, we are gonna see the progress bar um, uh, let's say e increasing uh, the, the values. So I think this is nice in order to see how uh, long it's gonna take the whole process and how far we are from the end, okay? So now that we have defined our class, we can simply say, okay, dataset is equal to Frankenstein, our class. Uh, the root is the um, actually where the data is gonna be stored in our local file system. And then as I told you before, we can apply whatever pre-transformation uh, we want here or pre-filter. So I have decided just for illustrational purposes, there is absolutely uh, no um, meaning to do so. 
to do to apply this transformation. It's just uh, for illustration. So here we go. Now we see that uh, the, the files uh, are being downloaded. The processing has started, and now we're going to see the progress bar. Yes, exactly. Mm. So, um, I, so there is mm, not really much to see here because the, later uh, this data set object uh, that's going to be um, that, that we are creating now is going to be basically a data set uh, in a, a Python geometric. So basically, then you can uh, uh, basically take it uh, with a data loader and uh, use it uh, for whatever um, task you want. Okay, I mean, so, so with whatever um, uh, network you want. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is uh, concerning uh, the creation of uh, a data set. Okay. Uh, really, there is not really much to say in the sense that um, the most um, that you have to do is uh, writing the processing part because it's going to be, of course, tailored for uh, um, uh, depending on uh, what you have inside of the files that you uh, have stored the information. So basically, this you have to write it by yourself. The rest is pretty much uh, automatic. And uh, well, uh, that's it for the creation of your own data set. Let me talk now uh, about um, about other benchmarks that are out there. So basically, um, last year, we have seen uh, an increase in the number of uh, benchmark in the sense that uh, there has been almost simultaneously published two papers describing two different uh, set of benchmarks uh, available for graph neural networks. Uh, specifically, the, uh, they were called Open Graph Benchmark and Benchmarking uh, Graph Neural Networks. So the first one uh, is done basically by the same guys that did uh, Python Geometric, so Matthias Fai and um, other, um, other PhD students uh, from Dartmouth University. Uh, benchmarking GNNs is, um, I guess it's done in collaboration with uh, between University of uh, New York, I guess, and uh, Montreal. I should check it out, but it's basically uh, the other uh, state-of-the-art benchmarking framework uh, for uh, graph neural networks. Why, uh, why is it important to have uh, benchmarks? Because uh, the benchmark usually uh, provide a, a collection of data set, usually uh, the most uh, famous and used data set in the literature. Uh, so basically, you find it already there. You don't have to go uh, scrap the web in order to find them and then to process it. Uh, they also usually provide, and this is very important, uh, standardized training validation and test split. This is very important for uh, reproducibility in the sense that uh, many times uh, the results can be different based on the train uh, validation or test split that you use in your experiments. So basically, if you have them standardized, uh, in a certain way to tackle basically um, to tackle the ability of uh, the learning ability of the models, uh, it's very good for uh, both reproducibility and also for comparison. Because then, uh, if I use the same data set with the same uh, train validation and test split, I have a fair comparison with you that you have used the same. Okay, so this is very important. Uh, the last thing that um, they are very useful uh, because they provide um, the leaderboards basically. So uh, they have already, uh, the, the authors of these papers and of these uh, frameworks uh, have already run um, many graph neural network models on these uh, standardized data sets and provide a list of which is the method that uh, performs better with uh, in which task or data set, okay? This is very important also for, um, for knowing how well uh, your model, for instance, is doing, okay? Um, the last advantage of having uh, this benchmark is that uh, they do not only provide the data sets, uh, the well-polished and prepared data sets, they also provide a code base to uh, run uh, the experiments. This is very uh, nice because they do it, they both do it. So basically, OpenGraph Benchmark uh, has its code base uh, for experiments 
based on uh, PyTorch Geometric, of course. Benchmarking uh, graph neural networks since that uses a uh, deep graph library, which is basically the other uh, main um, li Python library for uh, performing graph neural networks. Um, OK, let's uh, go a little bit uh, more into detail of Open Graph Benchmark. So here, Open Graph Benchmark, uh, the data sets in Open Graph Benchmark are based uh, following three main uh, aspects, basically. S the scale of the data sets, the tasks that you uh, can solve on that the data sets, and the domains. So basically, here we see uh, that the, there are three orthogonal aspects in the sense that you can have uh, for uh, different domains, different scales, you can have different tasks, OK? And uh, just to give you an overview of uh, the current situation of uh, the data sets that are available in Open Graph Benchmark, um, this is uh, a table taken from the paper. So we can see that we have, uh, I counted them before, it should be 14 um, total uh, data sets divided by the, the three tasks that I also uh, uh, introduced a little bit um, in the in the last uh, talk. So node prediction, link prediction, and graph prediction. Uh, you have the uh, also the, the domain and the the, the size, uh, the three different sizes of uh, data sets. So okay, here also I want to show you something in the sense that we can have um, this data sets available in PyTorch Geometric very easily. So Open Graph Benchmark is uh, a library, per se. So you, if you want to uh, have access to these data sets, you have to install, it, uh, to install it in your environment. Very easy. You can do it by peep, uh, running pip install OGB. Uh, then uh, there is just a little bit of no um, a name convention, basically, for the data sets. So basically, um, you have to put uh, this prefix, which is OGBN for node prediction, OGBG for uh, graph prediction, OGBL for link prediction, and then adding uh, the name of the data set that you want to load. So basically, here we have, uh, I don't know, archive, which is a, a data set in, um, in the node prediction, uh, node property prediction, let's say, uh, um, class okay, so here we're gonna use OGBN archive to download uh, to load our data set and to do it uh, to load it for Python specifically uh, as a Python geometric data set. Uh, we need basically to import uh, this class here uh, from uh, the sub module node prop prep. Here I put uh, the other two because it's basically the same for the other two classes of um, data sets, OK? So here, we import this from Open Graph Benchmark. Here, we have specified our name with uh, the naming convention. And simply by calling uh, this class here, we are going to retrieve a data set object uh, in PyTorch Geometric. So here, uh, you can specify basically the very same information that you can do into a, uh, into a um, PyTorch Geometric data set. So here we have, if you want to apply some transformation, you just have to add it here um, in the header, OK? So here we go. Uh, I guess I have already downloaded it. That's why uh, we don't see that it's downloading it. But basically, if we inspect what's inside here, we have the graph uh, object, which is basically a data object, as we were expecting. Also, uh, here, we basically see that we can have uh, retrieve the IDs for training, validation, and test. As I told you before, this is important because uh, reproducibility um, for reproduci reproducibility purposes. Okay. Okay. Um, this is if you want to load um, Open Graph Benchmark um, data sets into PyTorch Geometric. Also. Uh, in, in PyTorch Geometric, you can load uh, the graphs, the data sets, sorry, uh, explained in benchmarking graph neural networks. So basically, uh, this suite, a suite of uh, data sets is a little bit different. So here we have uh, small to medium scale data sets, so from 6,000 to 7 million nodes. Just for comparison, there is a data set in um, Open Graph Benchmark, which is 120 million nodes, something like that, OK? 
Uh, there are uh, fewer data sets. They are very, um, they are selected basically. So we don't have this orthogonality between dimension, type of task and uh, domain. But here we have uh, some uh, data sets uh, linked to some domains and that's it. Um, so here is a, a, there is a summary of what I'm uh, intending. So basically here we have some uh, um, data sets which are for graph classification, a couple of them are for edge classification, an old classification data set. Also here, interesting, we have a graph regression data set, which I haven't seen in a, um, Open Graph Benchmark. And um, as I told you before, we can also load these data sets because they are already present in um, uh, in benchmarking, sorry, in, um, in PyTorch Geometric. So basically, um, if we load the module data sets, uh, of PyTorch Geometric and uh, list all of them. Okay, here we can see that we have this um, this class which is called the GNN Benchmark Dataset. So this class contains the datasets that I told you before about uh, the paper bench benchmarking graph neural networks. So here, if we go and check uh, what are the datasets um, that we can load, we have uh, not. Uh, all of them, not all eight of them, because uh, uh, we, we sh uh, I showed you eight data sets. Here we have just six, but still, um, we can uh, simply load them the data set um, as we uh, already know how to do. And uh, we can have also this uh, suite of data sets uh, available for our experiments. Um, so this is it for, uh, for today. So this closes. Uh, the, the two lessons on uh, the data sets, the data and data sets in uh, PyTorch Geometric. Uh, I, hope, um, I hope you have find it uh, extensive and uh, clear enough. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to, um, to explain you uh, whatever you want. Yeah, Giovanni, I have a question about yeah. the um, the data set class, the in-memory data set class, if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, once we, uh, because I do not follow the last session of the reading group, so um, once you, the, okay, the first time you download the, this, um, the data set, you have to process it and write it in your, your local machine. But the second time you call it, you have to set up some path, something changes in the way you call the data set. Um, that, that's, uh, that's a good question, actually. So basically, I forgot to mention the fact that, um, so let, let me uh, clarify two things. The first, uh, only the first time you uh, basically call, um, so basically, uh, the first time you call it, uh, you're gonna download it. So if I do it now, for instance, it not, it's not gonna be downloaded, okay? It's gonna be retrieved from the local file system. So here, you see that if I run it, basically what um, uh, what the, the class does is it will go and look for uh, the file here, this data.pt, okay? Which is contained in a specific folder, which is this one. So basically here we have, okay? into uh, data, which is the, the root file that you have, um, the root uh, folder that you have selected into process, we have the file data.pt. And basically when you um, load it the second time, it's gonna be loaded from here. Okay. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to clarify is that uh, you don't really need uh, all these things, okay, to download it, to um, even process it. I mean, no, you need to process it probably, but. Let's say that you have a, a local data set that you uh, just want to use by yourself, okay? You can totally skip the download part, okay? Because you have it already installed. I mean, you have it already in your machine and you can uh, simply go uh, through the process part. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay so I simply remove that function, so the, 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 the two middles, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, 
Is there any other question? Maybe in the chat. Um, yeah, let me check. Can we transform data set of images in data set of graphs? Um, well, uh, so basically, I would say that in the process, um, in the process method, you can do almost whatever you want, as long as you basically provide, uh, in the end, a file which contains a list of data of data objects, OK? So I would say that, yes, you can basically download a data set of images and into the process method, uh, process it. Uh, just basically, of course, to convert an image into a graph, you need uh, some techniques, uh, for instance, the super pixel techniques. But if you, as long as you implement it uh, into the process uh, method, I guess it's going to be fine. I haven't done it. But uh, I think there there would be no problems. Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, then I think we can close it here. Thank you, Zodi. Thank okay. you. Thank you Bye. for listening. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.